My name is Alistair Erskine. I'm a physician and internist and a pediatrician. I'm also the Chief Information and Digital Officer for Emory Healthcare and the Vice President for Digital Health for Emory University. The population's getting older. As we're more successful taking care of people, they tend to uh, live longer. Uh, at the same time, the body of knowledge of healthcare is expanding uh, uh, every single day. And uh, the amount of regulation and need to be able to make sure uh, that we follow certain prescribed ways of taking care of patients and bill patients a certain way, et cetera, et cetera, is all but increasing. So we have an issue where we have an Asian population with the amount of additional administrative work with the workforce that's getting smaller. You can see how that becomes a problem with time. Something needed to come and offer some relief. Turning to AI wasn't something that happened on a particular day, uh, at a particular time. It turns out we've been doing some version of AI for a few decades. Deep machine learning, especially when it came to image processing, became really important. The real transformation, pun intended, came with the ChatGPT's introduction into society. And these were large language model uh, design tools which could uh, take one step further where you didn't need to necessarily know SQL programming and ways to be able to analyze data to be able to pose a question against that data. Now the tools that large language models use today typically uh, are asking questions against the entire internet. Well that's helpful to some extent in healthcare but healthcare requires self-specification uh, in terms of the way uh, that it answers a question. It needs to be answered reliably, consistently, without these things called hallucinations, which is where the system actually makes up the answer if it doesn't know. So thinking about ways to responsibly apply AI in these new ways uh, that we're using large language models became really important. We now have mechanisms whereby uh, I can walk into a room and sit down with my patient ask their consent to see if we can record that conversation. And then forget about the computer, forget about the screen, forget about the keyboard, and spend my time actively listening to the patient and addressing their concerns. All the while that I'm doing that, the system is listening to that conversation, that dialogue. It's converting that dialogue into a transcript, and it's converting that transcript into a clinical note. Organize the way that you would typically expect to see a clinical note, designed to be able to communicate with other peers and with insurance companies and so forth. And a minute after the exam, basically prompting the clinician to review that clinical note, make sure nothing's missed and everything's accurate, and then to be able to sign that and commit it to the chart. Well, it's called ambient listening. That's the name of the technology. It's been life-changing. For the patients that are admitted, admitted to the hospital, we use AI cameras. These are cameras that can detect if a patient has the intent to try to get out of bed, even though they may have medication that made them uh, dizzy, or they may be confused or experience some delirium from being in the hospital. And when the system detects the intent of the patient using AI of the patient's, the patient's facial expressions and the patient's body movements, then it can, it can alert the patient, wait, wait, don't move, somebody's gonna come help you. And if the patient continues to try to get out of bed, then it can set off the alarm on that unit to make sure somebody runs into the room and prevents the patient from falling. It also can detect as a patient's developing a pressure ulcer because they haven't moved in two hours and need to be turned. These kinds of technologies are helpful as adjuncts to care to be able to make sure that do no harm when somebody comes into the hospital that they're not worse off than when they arrived. So uh, in addition to that, now that you have a camera in the room, you can do a number of other things like virtual nursing, virtual sitters, bring in a virtual video medical interpreter, have a physician that's in another hospital that wants to consult on that patient, be able to go into that room. The number of patients that fall when you use AI cameras goes down to the tune of 75%. In the responsible AI group that we have formed, one of the things that we've committed to is saying, look, if we're gonna to present to a patient anything that's been created by AI, we're gonna let them know. We wanna make sure that we're very open and deliberate, but that was a decision that was made 
based on a group that was thinking through the ethical parameters of, uh, of the application of AI. From a security standpoint, everything we do in healthcare really has to, by law, um, follow uh, the HIPAA rule. So we don't want any unauthorized person getting into a medical record. We wouldn't want AI getting into a medical record if it's not supposed to be there. And we use the same tools to protect privacy and encrypt information in AI as we do in anything else that we do in healthcare. The sketching can be to the point where it's standard of care. They won't be a choice. In order to be able to retain nurses and physicians, in order to be able to better take care of patients that are hospitalized or in clinic, in order to be able to make sure that you have the right diagnosis, that you're applying the right set of clinical trials to a patient who has cancer to make sure they get the best treatment, all those are using AI. And in fact, it's hard to find an electronic health record system that doesn't have AI infused in it already. It is a competitive differentiator, and it will be very much tied to long-term survival of many companies out there. So I think the idea is to not necessarily casually and cavalierly apply AI today. The idea is at a minimum to experiment and try uh, sitting on the digital frontier and the AI frontier and experimenting and adapting and tweaking and understanding what is the right application for the right case. In some cases, it will be critical to be able to use AI to be able to advance the mission of that organization.